Well, today we're going to take care of an issue on the Dodge that uh, plagues pretty much all third gen and technically second gen owners. We're going to upgrade the steering. Our Dodge Power Wagon still has the stock steering linkage in it. And you can tell that by the drag link coming down from the pitman arm to the passenger tire, and then the tie rod coming over from the driver's side and teeing in or basically making what they call a Y link into that drag link that comes down from the pitman arm. This joint over here from the driver's side to the passenger side is notorious for causing death wobble on the third gen uh, pickup trucks. And what they did is they went to the fourth gen style, which they call a T-Link. And I'll show you guys that here in a minute. And I'll kind of show you a side-by-side, -side, hopefully once I get it taken apart, on what the major difference is on it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is break all of our lug nuts free. And we're going to use a 24 millimeter socket or a 15 16 for this. Okay, so the next thing I want to do before I jack the truck up is I want to break this nut loose on the steering box so I can take the pitman arm off. And this is going to be an inch and five sixteenths. Alright, that's set. And it should go without saying right now, your steering wheel should be straight ahead while the truck is parked in the driveway. Um, that's going to aid in putting this back together and making sure you get everything lined up properly. With the parking brake engaged on the truck and a block behind the rear tires, you can jack the truck up. And then we're going to place a jack stand underneath the axle. Now if you're doing this job on a regular 2500 or 3500 diesel, your truck probably does not have the skid plate on it. The power wagons came standard with this, so I'm going to take this off just so it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. It's got a bolt here, a bolt here, one down here, and one on the back side over here. The two closest to the tire do not have to be removed, they just have to be loosened up because the bracket is actually slotted. Um, these two over here underneath the center of the axle have to be taken out and they are a 15 millimeter socket I've already loosened up those two and taken one of these out. So we should just have to take this last one out Just like that. With the truck properly supported on jack stands, we're going to go ahead and take the front wheels off now. With the wheels off, now would be a good time to take a measurement between the two spindles. You can transfer that measurement over to the new drag link and make things worlds easier on your alignment technician. So all I did was hook the tape measure on the pin sticking up on the other side. I'm taking a measurement to the center of this pin, and it looks like we're at about 61 and 5 eighths inches. Now, we're going to start taking the bar off, 
So we're going to take the nuts loose at both spindles using a 13 16 socket or the metric equivalent. Next thing we're going to do is take the steering shock loose at the track bar bracket over here. And don't be surprised if you have to use PB Blaster to break it loose. This is going to be a 15 millimeter socket and an 18 millimeter wrench. Alright, with the pitman arm nut loosely on, as you can see, it's only on by a couple threads right now. You're going to use a pitman arm puller, or in my case a two jaw puller because I can't get my pitman arm puller in there. So we're going to use a two jaw puller, you can get this from any auto parts store. There is a recess in the center of the sector shaft right here, or in the center of the shaft, the output shaft. And that's where your, your pivot's going to go. Set that up in there, put your jaws up on top of the pitman arm. Just make sure everything's centered. Slowly run it up. And mine's been off before, so this is going to come off fairly easy. You may need a little bit of force to get yours off, um, and that's kind of normal. So PB Blaster is your friend in that case. And we're just going to turn this until our pitman arm starts coming off the shaft. And if that doesn't, well, as I was going to say, if that doesn't work, sometimes a little tap on the side of the pitman arm with a hammer while it's under load will uh, make it pop. But as you see, the reason we left the nut on there is so this thing come flying off. All right, on the tie rod or the drag link, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to put the nut on a couple threads just to capture it. And then we're going to take a hammer and we're going to strike straight down on this. And we're going to do the same thing on the passenger side. So here we have the old bar at the top and the new bar at the bottom and you can kind of see the differences. I'll point them out here a little bit more to you. So one of the big differences is on this portion of the old bar or the old drag link you notice that the pitman arm all the way down to the passenger tie rod is one piece. So that would mean that your passenger side toe is actually set with that drag link adjuster. Your driver's side then tees into this bar over here so you have a joint here and then you have an adjuster over there and that's how you would set your total toe between the two or your toe on your left side. On the new bar, or the new drag length, you can see that from the passenger tie rod all the way to the driver's side tie rod, not only is it beefier, but it's one solid bar. And then the drag length coming in from the pitman arm actually tees into that solid bar. So your toe adjustment is all set with the adjuster over there by the driver's side toe, uh, uh, tie rod end. The steering wheel center is adjusted with this um, adjuster right up by the pitman arm. The other thing that you want to note as well, if you're going to do this modification and swap, this is a Mopar um, heavy duty steering assembly though. Uh, I wanted to point that out too. Um, the factory drag link that comes with the power wagon or the third gens, you notice how it kind of makes like a zigzag or an S shape. The new style pitman arm that they recommend to go with this bar actually kind of comes out and just makes a straight slant and it stays at that angle. And they say that actually improves the wear on that joint. And you remember that measurement we took earlier on? 
Well, now would be a good time to go back and check it on the new bar. And we're at about 61 and a half right there. We needed to be at 61 and 5 eighths. So what I'm going to do is, because we're in the ballpark, I'm going to install this just in case when it's installed in, in the spindle that it's sitting at somewhat of an angle. I want to make sure that it's dead on when I put it back in the truck, but right now we're kind of in the ballpark, so it's not going to be that much of an adjustment. The other thing you can do is you can take a measurement from the center of this joint here to the center of this joint where it intersects and get you a ballpark idea of how long that this needs to be so you can adjust that on the new bar as well. All right, so assembly at this point is basically just going back together in reverse order. Two things I need to bring up though before I continue on. Um, one, the drag link connection to the pitman arm on the old original steering box or steering linkage, it was a castle nut with a cotter pin. You are going to need a new updated nut. This is the same nut that the outer tie rod ends use, and that is the part number right there, 6505263AA. You're going to need that in order to be able to connect your drag link to your pitman arm. The other thing that you're going to have to look at is your steering shock. Most steering shocks that came on the old setup had a pin already built into them, like this. And on the new drag link assembly or tie rod assembly, you can see there it's got the U-bolts and a plate, and there's actually a stud on that. This one used to go into a hole that was drilled into or machined into the old drag link, and then it would it would fasten on with a nut. Well, this particular one, this is a Bilstein, was held on and riveted on the backside like so. So I ground the rivet off, took that out, and then I ran up to Lowe's, and I got a half-inch inner diameter by 5 eighths outer diameter sleeve, and I'm going to press this in and then cut it down, and then this will fit on that stud. So I can actually reuse my old steering shock. The only other way to get around that is to buy a whole new steering shock. But I'm going to get this thing back together and then I'll come back to you guys and we'll show you how we do the last couple adjustments. Steering linkage is bolted back in. And we're going to come inside the truck here and we're going to make sure that our steering wheel is center or as close to center as possible, right about there. Now, I'm going to come back around here, and I'm going to adjust the drag link coming down from the pitman arm. And you're going to see that spindle straighten out. Right now, while I'm turning this adjuster, the steering wheel is actually moving instead of the spindle. So I'm going to go center the steering wheel again. And you can see we're pretty close right now. It's got a little bit more to go. If you can see right through this slot right here, this is one end of the bar, that's the other end of the bar, and I'm pushing them away from each other right now. All right, let's see how that looks. Let's say we're about as close as we're gonna get right now, and that's gonna be good enough to get it down to the alignment shop. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is just measure between this hub and the passenger side hub, front and rear, to try to get them squared up a little bit, get them even. That way I'm not scrubbing, uh, scrubbing the tread off my tires. Granted, I'm just driving down to the alignment shop, but either way, I'd rather not damage my tires. All right, the truck is all back together, and I'll give you guys a quick peek of what it looks like underneath.
All we have left to do is take it down to the alignment shop and get the alignment set and we'll be ready to roll. If you guys have any questions about the uh, video or the parts that we used, please drop them in the comments below and we'll try to get back to you as quick as possible with that. I will be putting a listing of all the parts and the torque specs down below um, so you guys can check those out as well. We'll see you next time.